In this coding exercise, we are asked to build a file name selector. And so if you come down here, you can see that the expectation is that this test returns the Ruby file names from an array of file names. Now, if it was just the file name, that wouldn't be too difficult because right here you can see we'd be able to do something like split it at the period level and then re remove the extension. But right here, we also have to take into account that we have HTML files, we have JavaScript files, and so it's simply not enough to only split it at the period level. We also have to filter and see which ones are Ruby files and which ones are not. And that's gonna determine what we pull in. Now that by itself will not fulfill the entire test. If you come down to this line right here, you can see the expectation is to get the file name by itself. So in addition to only selecting the Ruby files, we also can only get the file name and we have to remove the extension. Now this might seem a little bit on the complicated side, but it is really not that much. And in fact, we're gonna be able to do this with a single line of code. Now, if you look down at what the expectation is going to allow us to do, is it should be able to take in an array of file names, and then we should be able to call the file selector method on it. So what that first tells me is we need to open up the array class and then define a method called file selector and as you can see that takes one argument which is going to be the extension of the file name so in other words if we type in rb like we do on line 12 then that is going to return all the ruby files but if we typed in html that should return all the html files so the first thing i'm going to do is pass in grep so grep is a method that allows you to search through a set of items. And so we're going to say grep, and then I'm gonna pass in a regular expression. Now this one's gonna be a little bit different. So it's going to start with the slash to let grep know we're not passing in a string, we're actually passing in a pattern to match. And then we wanna say that any, any items with a dot followed by anything else, and then a backslash for another period. So essentially what we're saying is we want to grab and we want to make sure that this has a period. And then we're gonna pass in a, a our extension. So to do that inside of a regular expression, it's actually the same as if you were to do it in a string. So you just do the pound followed by curly braces, and then you can just pass in the variable. So we're looking for the extension. And so this by itself is not going to be enough. And I'm going to show you why that is exactly here. So if I come down and use our file name. So I should now be able to call file names and then oops, file names. And then from there, call file selector. And then I should be able to pass in anything. So I can say HTML and this is going to run it, and let's see what this brings back to us. So you can see that this almost gives us what we want. So this performed grep, and it went through the system, and it went through and it said, okay, bring me back any of the elements that contain this pattern. So any of the elements that have a period followed by that extension. That's actually not that difficult to do. But part of the reason why I wanted to do this exercise was to show you a very cool little, uh, a little, very cool little method or process that you can call, and it's specifically related to how the Unix file system can work. And so this is not specific to Ruby. This is more specific to many of the Unix systems, but it is something that if you're using grep or scan or some of these items, it can be very helpful. And that is to pass in a block and use that with curly braces. And then I'm just gonna pass in $1. 
Now, if I save this and run it, you'll see that what it does is it's going to bring back exactly what we want. So right here, you can see that this now returns the file name and the file name only. It doesn't do the extension. And so this is an interesting thing. This $1, you don't see it in a ton of code, but whenever you're working with things such as regular expressions and you're parsing those out, it's helpful to note that that expression contains a few things. It's not just a match by itself. It actually has a few components inside of it. So grep allows you to essentially split that up. And if you think of these file names here as being mini little components, then it's made up of a file name followed by the pattern to match it, which we know the pattern we're looking for is a dot followed by these elements. And so with each one of these, that is the second component. It is the matcher, but we only want the first one. So we can pass in $1, and that's exactly what it gets us. So if you're working with regular expressions, that's going to be something that you'll find comes in very handy. Now if I run JS, this works. And if we run the tests themselves, after I hit save in the file, our spec March 16th, this should now be passing, and it is. And one of the reasons why I wanted to show this was one, to show you how to build this out and have you walk through it. Also discuss the $1, because if you originally went through this and you weren't aware of that kind of functionality being built into Ruby, you might have tried something where you iterated over the file names, you checked to see if the elements had a, or if the array element contained that pattern, and then you tried to simply remove it and that could work but it could get kind of messy if you tried to do something such as slicing it and saying oh I want to remove the last three characters that wouldn't work at all because we have these three characters here but when it's an HTML file you're going to have five characters and, and there's all kinds of different numbers if you're working with C files it's only going to be one so that is something you can't use slice for this because you're going to run into a number of edge cases where it won't work and I think this is one of the more clean solutions this allows you to simply search for a file and or a file type pass in the extension and then grab the file name by itself